Hi, here's a photo from a workshop I took on uh, Wednesday night and uh, it's taken with a 10 stop, uh, a Haida 10 stop filter which gives quite a blue cast. Now uh, I'll let everyone have a go with this filter and um, so I'm struggling to get to grips with this blue cast and uh, so I thought I'd just do a tutorial on how to edit this shot. So how do you get rid of it? Well the best way I've found to get rid of any sort of cast is to use a white balance select tool which is this little eye dropper here or you can press the W key and what we need to find is something in this scene which was white or colour so pure black a shade of grey or white now usually these bits of water here they're uh, pretty much pure white unless you've got some sort of flood going on where it tends to be a bit browner but on this night it was white so I'm going to click on there now if you look up here where the sunlight was catching these, those are relatively quite warm and uh, yellow which is pretty much what I want. If I went to there and clicked on those, the shot would go back quite blue. Now these are white and this has gone blue. But I want it to be a nice warm sunset so let's just go into this bit here, press the W key, click on there and then back out again. So that's how I sort out the white balance issue. Now obviously we've got a very bright sky and quite a dark foreground going on. So I'd probably grab hold of the highlight slider and bring it down a bit to calm the sky a little bit and I'd bring the shadows up to fill this area with a bit more light. You can start to see the trees and things, can't you? A bit more there. Okay. Um, if you want to just add a bit more white, you can add a bit of the white slider. But if you have a look at the history now, we've got something at the very left hand side, the blacks, and we've got something at the very right hand side, the whites. So I think that to me is probably about right for these sliders. I've done a bit of contrast, so that gives it quite a lot of punch automatically. You've gone to about 40 there. And now the, probably the, the daddy of landscape shots is a clarity slider. So if we pull that across, all of a sudden we're starting to get a very metallic kind of look which is what you get from a 10 stop filter when you shoot it on water and if you wanted to you can play with the colour a little bit like that okay so that's how to get it sort of part way there obviously we need to crop because we've got a bit of vignetting going on I had a, uh, a 10 stop a polarizer and some grad filters on this so there's a lot going on so I'm going to pull that a little bit down like that, keeping the uh, waterfall, well the weir, on that top third. Right, so I quite like this general area down here. I think there's a bit of information we can drag out of that. So the easiest way to play with these is to get your radial filter and you click right in the middle of where you want to affect. So I'm doing this kind of area over here. So let's click there and you draw a circle or an oval or whatever shape comes out yeah, it's always an oval and in this area I'm going to increase the highlights so let's go to there see how it brings up these textures here a little bit more and I'm also going to add some clarity just to increase the contrast and the magic new slider dehaze now let's leave that alone now that rock to me might have a nice bit of colour in there so let's increase the saturation yeah so that's gone a bit greener hasn't it and finally a bit of sharpness so that's nicely affected that area um, you may want to do the same sort of thing over here because it's some nice texture there maybe just add a bit of clarity and this one's maybe too bright so let's bring the shadows the sorry the highlights down a bit and the shadows up there you go, yeah, you see the kids on the other bank having a bonfire. Um, and to get some impact onto this, uh, this falls, I'm going to draw a long thin oval, something like that. I'm going to drag it into place so it's kind of in the middle. And then once it's in place you can rotate it by just going outside like that. So what we're going to do with this. I reckon uh, let's add a bit more clarity to it. Maybe bring those shadows up a little bit. Is it burning out? We can always test whether anything's burning out by going to this little arrow 
it's show highlight clipping. See the red bit above the tree. So we're okay on the waterfall there. I'm going to add a bit of sharpness to it as well. Okay. Um, maybe just play with the whites. Okay. So just let's see what it's like when we switch all those ovals off and then back on again. So the selective way of editing stuff is really effective on landscapes so you can edit different bits at different paces and different times. So if you want to see more of the trees you can just bring up the shadows see how that's taken what was a black area and now got this lovely uh, colour on it. If you wanted to do something a bit extra on the stone, it, just on its own you can draw a little oval over that again maybe even in the white up so it really stands out. Um, now this sky over here, if you wanted to separately darken the sky a little bit, what you could do is just bring down a grad. So you click the grad tool and just click, drag. Anything above where you clicked has a 100% effect. Everything below has zero and the, between the two it gradually fades from one to the other. So for the sky you might just want to bring those highlights down a little bit so it's not massively too bright. You could even add a little bit more saturation if it's a nice colourful sky. And if you really wanted to you could make it look like, like a warmer sky by Upping the temperature hasn't made a massive difference out there. So that's the sort of thing you can do um, just with the um, the white balance tool and the um, editing tool, which we call the radio fonts. <laughs> Sorry, I've completely lost my mind there. Well, this is what I did earlier. Anyway, this is this is an earlier edit of the same shot. So what I've done for you just there and what I did to the other day is pretty much the same shot really. So if you've been struggling, just give that sort of process a go. Divide the, the uh, scene up into different areas and tackle each one with a radial. If it's a big chunk, use a graduate filter and if you've got a little dinky bit you want to change, there's also a brush tool. So I hope that helps. Cheers.